I think we're live. Welcome, everyone. Hope you're doing well. I hope you are ready to learn some English. I hope you're ready to talk a little bit about Halloween. That's an American holiday we have. I know some other places around the world may celebrate it, but we are going to find out a little bit later. Halloween didn't even start in the United States. No. But before we get into the English lesson, I would like to say hello to a couple people. We have a legend. There is an absolute legend in the house. His name is Mr. Bob the Canadian. Welcome, Mr. Bob the Canadian. Something tells me he is not here to learn English, but I think he wants to talk to one of his channel members. So I'm sure you all know Bob the Canadian, but welcome, Mr. Bob the Canadian. A lot of my channel members, a lot of my subscribers have come because of Bob the Canadian. So thank you so much. Audi the Thai is here. Harry, Harry 300 from Indonesia. Welcome. Of course, another Canadian. Amina is here. Welcome. Mortania is in the house. Welcome. Japan's in the house. Noriko, hope you're doing well. Amina is still here. She is not shopping today. I hope you got your Tim Hortons though. So in this English lesson, you are going to learn a lot about Halloween. We are going to talk about some English phrasal verbs you might use when you talk about Halloween. Everybody's favorite, right? English phrasal verbs. We'll also talk about some terms like trick or treat or spooky. Is that the same as scared? Hmm, maybe. Maybe not. And of course, I'll also have some, some banners at the bottom, which I will read so you can see what the words look like, and that might help you learn English a little bit more quickly. So let's get started with the first term. That's the thumbnail, just in case you didn't see that before. We got a mummy, that thing in the middle. We have a jack-o'-lantern. We will talk about that. And we have me. I'm there. So the first term we need to talk about if we are going to talk about Halloween is trick or treat. Trick or treat. And you can see down there in the orange, black and orange are two colors that we often use for Halloween. So I have a over there a black background. Got some orange there, and I have my only orange shirt. So trick or treat is what children say when they visit a house asking for candy. And you can see this group of children. They are all dressed up in their costumes. Yes, we use that English phrasal verb dressed up when you put on a costume. Here's the confusing thing, though. Sometimes people will say they are dressed up when they try to look fancy. I'm not wearing a t-shirt or a sweatshirt today. I'm wearing a collared shirt. So you might say I am more dressed up for this English lesson than other English lessons. <clears throat> so if a person wants to dress up, they might put on a fancy dress or they might put on a collared shirt, maybe a tie, but you can also dress up for Halloween. And that means you put on a costume and you go trick or treating. Now, what is trick or treating? Well, you ask for candy. So you're hoping to get a treat, but some children, if they don't get a treat, they will play a trick on the person who lives in that house or that apartment. The reason children say trick or treat is that they will play a trick on the person. If they don't give out candy, give out candy. Another English phrasal verb. So a lot of families, at least in the United States, they will choose either they are giving out candy for Halloween or they are not 
giving out candy for Halloween. And then you might be sitting there wondering, well, how do the little children know if they are going to get candy at a house? This is what people do, at least in the United States. Maybe it's different in other countries. But here in the United States, if people do not want to give out candy on Halloween night, they will keep their outside lights off. So a lot of times we have indoor lights. So you're inside, maybe you need to read a book or cook dinner. You'll just turn your lights on. We don't usually call them inside lights, but on the outside of your house, maybe it's dark and you don't want to trip and fall when you walk to your car, you might turn on an outside light, maybe a porch light. Many American homes, even some apartments, have outside lights. And on Halloween night, October 31st, if a family wants to give out candy, they will turn on their outside lights. Let's check the chat. Make sure there are no questions. Feel free, if you have a question about Halloween, leave it right in the chat. I do see a lot of people saying hello to each other. We are live on Facebook too. So Steve, hope you're doing well over there, Facebook. Rudy, hope all is going well. Dominican Republic, right? Dominican or Haiti? Oh, I can't remember. It's down there somewhere. Constantine, hope you're doing well, my friend. Yes, lots of people are saying hello to Bob the Canadian. Bob the Canadian is very busy. Something tells me he might have scooted. That's another way you can say that you need to you need to leave. He might have just dropped in for a couple seconds and then scooted. But uh, I emailed him earlier this morning about something on his channel. Martina, one of the best English teachers. That's I think she's talking to Bob the Canadian, but because he is, he is one of the best, right? I'm excited about this topic because I love this time of year. Let's get started. Let's do it. Slovakia, small, small country in Central Europe, Slovakia, Slovakia. What's the capital of Slovakia? Is it Bratislava? Is it Bratislava? <clears throat> All right. Hi. I like that. I'll read that again. No. Hey, well, if you're talking about me, one of the best English teachers, that's fine. That's fine. I, I didn't even notice the, the small error. Was there an error? Hey, Angelique Julia. Hey, I'm so glad you could join here. Angelique has been a channel member for a while, but she doesn't often show up for the live streams. I think she's often busy. It's great to see you here. And Natalia's here. Chili is in the house. All right. Mahmoud is wondering, why do people give candy to kids? Yeah. In the United States, we tell children don't take candy from strangers. Strangers are people you don't know. But on Halloween night, that is the one night that it is okay to take candy from strangers. Small children will have their parents with them or maybe an older brother or sister. And most people, most people give out candy and it's just fine. It's not dirty candy. It's not candy that is going to make them sick. Well, maybe if you eat too much candy, it could make you sick. Harry, what kind of tricks, that's a good question, will kids do if they don't get candies? Thank you for the question. It's a great question. To be honest, I don't think many kids will pull any tricks on anybody. I don't think so. But... Please don't do this. Please don't do this. But two tricks I have heard some children, some teenagers doing on Halloween night would be 
toilet paper rolling a house. If you roll a house, that means you take a roll of toilet paper and you throw it on their trees, you throw it on the roof of their house. If you roll a house, you take toilet paper and just get it all over the house. It's a mess to clean up. Or everybody knows what eggs are, I'm sure. Chickens lay eggs, probably a couple other animals too. But they also might egg a house. Yes, egg can be a verb. It can be something you do. And egging a house is simply throwing eggs at a house. Not very nice, but those are two tricks that might happen on Halloween. <sighs> Bob and Brent are here. Yeah, good. I'm glad. Yeah. If you haven't followed Bob the Canadian, check that guy out. He is pretty amazing. Ah, Bratislava. Nice. All right, Yulia. Hey, welcome. Welcome. All right, I've heard that there are whole stores that sell things for Halloween. Yes. Are they closed the rest of the time or are they selling something else? That is a great question. So I think there was a, a YouTube short I made a few months ago because the Halloween store, that's what we call it in English, the Halloween store opened. Maybe I should go over there and take a picture later today. But yes, there are store stores. I think it's called Spirit Halloween. Spirit Halloween. And they are all over the United States. They open at the end of summer. And they usually close a week after Halloween ends. So no, they are not open year round. That's the term we might use. They're not open year round. They are seasonal. That's a term you might not know. If a store is seasonal, it's only open during a certain season. Maybe an ice cream shop is only open during the summer. We would call that a seasonal shop. There are some stores that open and only sell Christmas ornaments. That would be seasonal. Spirit Halloween is a seasonal store. Tallow, how are you? Hope you're doing well. All right. Mahmood says, to be honest, this topic is not very interesting. Sorry about that. Some people like to learn about American culture. Some people just like to learn English. All right. The question what happens if you don't give candy to kids? Constantine, yep, yeah, I got you. I answered that one, right? Just going through the chat, making sure. Viola, hope you're doing well. Good to see you here. All right. Hey, I like to hear that. That's good company. Bob and Brent are the best teachers on uh, YouTube. Thank you so much. Apple of Frogs here. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, people get busy. Glad to see you here. Any questions? What? Angelique, that is so cool. Angelique is going to New York City. Um, can I still expect to see some Halloween decorations? Ooh, that's a good question. In New York City? Hmm. Now, New York City might be gearing up. That's an English phrasal verb that means to get ready for something. New York City might be gearing up for Thanksgiving and Christmas already. So I'm not sure if you will see any Halloween decorations. I think I might need to do a live English lesson about Thanksgiving this year. I don't remember if I've ever done one on Thanksgiving. So, all right, we need to, um, yeah, I don't, we're going to talk about that, Yelena. Why do so many horror movies happen at Halloween? Because Halloween is a spooky time of year. Spooky. We will talk about spooky. All right, Freddie says, I guess that kids only go to the nearest neighbors, so that keeps them safe. 
Sometimes yes, but in my town, there are certain neighborhoods where the houses are close together. So parents will drive their kids to these neighborhoods so they can rack up on candy. Rack up, it means you get a lot of something. So kids like to go to these neighborhoods where the houses are close together. You don't have to do as much walking and then they can rack up on Halloween candy. Hope this helped. Let's get back to the, yeah, it is. I could stay in the chat all this time. Hey, Meg, I hope you're doing well. Um, but I do have a lesson. Maybe we should get back to the lesson. But there are so many good questions. Constantine, yes, I saw your question on the community post. We are going to talk about the history of Halloween. I promise. Look at this, Natalia. She uses a great term, binge watching. Binge watching. Hopefully, to learn English, you will be binge watching some of my YouTube videos. It means to watch over and over. So you could pick a playlist, watch a ton of English videos, maybe from Bob the Canadian too. He's very good. But you could also binge watch scary movies. Chris, hope you're doing well. Gearing up for Halloween. That's right. Halloween is only two days away. Only two days away. Cecilia, did I say hi to you? If not, hello. If I did, hello again. Let's get back to the lesson because we will talk about where Halloween started and why it did. The next one after trick or treat is a term you might hear, and that is door to door, door to door. So a lot of children will go door to door to get Halloween candy. Here's a sentence for you. Children will go door to door trick or treating. Trick or treating can actually be a verb. Children can go trick or treating door to door. Sometimes people may go door to door selling things, not on Halloween, but on other days of the week. Maybe somebody will come to your door, knock on your door and try to sell you something. Most of the time when people come to my door selling something, I will say, no, thank you. Usually if I need something, I will go get it. I worry when people come to me with things that I should buy. Nah, probably not. But door to door. Hopefully that makes sense. You go from one door to the next door to the next door to the next door getting candy. So some people may, there's a typo. Always one typo here, isn't there? Always one typo. Hopefully that's the only one. Let me fix that. So it's absolutely perfect. Some people may go door to door trying to sell things. That's perfect. What about this thing? Goblin. Talk about scary or spooky. A goblin. A goblin is just a term for an ugly creature. They're usually green. They look like that picture. Hey, if you are listening to the podcast, I'm sorry you can't see the picture, but these are ugly green things. Children will sometimes dress up as goblins for Halloween. It's a very popular costume, but hard to describe. Easier to show a picture of what a goblin is. Usually ugly, usually green. Usually something you don't want to hang out with. You don't want to be around a goblin. But ghosts, it's another costume that children, even adults, you don't have to be a child to dress up for Halloween. There are some adult Halloween parties 
where adult friends will get together, dress up, maybe have a few alcoholic beverages, adult costume parties. They're not that rare for Halloween. They happen. But ghosts are probably the most common costume for Halloween because it's so easy. Just cut two eye holes in a bed sheet. And we talked about bed sheet a few lessons ago when we talked about sleep. But the bed sheet, think about the bed. Usually it's white, it's thin. You might cover yourself up with it at night. It's thin. Looks like that ghost. Eye holes. Is that a new word for you? Eye holes. What am I? Thought I got a text message. I have my phone right here. Why don't we do this? We are 20 minutes in. Just as a thank you to all the channel members, I often forget to do this, but why don't I turn on members only right now? Members only. Bob the Canadian does this. I'm getting a lot of great information from Bob the Canadian. He is the best. And I usually forget to turn off members only. So I am going to set my timer for five minutes. Members only chat. Hey Siri, set my timer for five minutes. Five minutes and counting, she says. All right, so it's members only as a thank you for channel members. Thank you so much. You really, I'm buying some new lights so that it will look better back here because of channel members. Thank you so much. If you would like to become a channel member, there are bonus videos. Um, there is a Discord server for silver members, Volley for gold members. Try it out for a month. You might like it. And you get your name in green for the chat. Speaking of the chat, let's check and see. Are there any? Apple the Frog says doors. Oh, no. Mega. I think Mega is sick, she said. What's this? <clears throat> Elena is wondering, who is the most superstitious person in my family? So if somebody is superstitious, they might have to do certain things before they leave the house. Maybe knock on a door three times for good luck. Maybe if a black cat crosses their path, they turn the other way. Superstitious. I would have to say that my family is not very superstitious. So I would say probably nobody. Nobody. Oh, Mahmoud, you could not be more wrong. You could not be more wrong. He says, I think you and Bob have run out of topics for live streams. That is wrong. Very wrong. I don't want to speak for Bob the Canadian, but uh, I think he has plenty of topics. I think he has plenty. All right. Um, speaking of members, Angelique Julia, thank you so much. She left a super chat. I got a little something for you. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah, that means so much. I love doing these live lessons, but if anybody thinks that they are so helpful, they're willing to give up some of their hard-earned money. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, let's leave that up there for a little while. I hope you have a great trip in New York City. If it was closer... I would go down, meet you. We could have some coffee. But for me to get to New York City is about a six-hour drive. It's about a six-hour drive. Usually when my family and I go to New York, we take a train to a state called Connecticut. I was in Connecticut a couple of weeks ago. We will, take, um, we will drive to Connecticut and then take a train from Connecticut. Just, you don't need a car in New York City. That's the great thing about visiting New York City. Angelique Julia, if she stays in New York City, she will not have to rent a car. You can take the subway 
pretty much anywhere you want in New York, even to New Jersey. There are a lot of cool things to do in New Jersey. Brent, at school, do you use a Halloween party or festival? Do teachers join um, an appropriate, the, they dress up? Um, no, no. I teach older students. So my students are 13 and 14 years old. So some of them still might go out trick or treating, but at school, we don't celebrate Halloween. Um, in fact, you can't wear a mask to my school. You might be able to paint your face. Hopefully that makes sense. Paint your face, but you can't wear a mask. You can't cover your face with a mask. All right. So much is going on in the chat. Yes. Hey, Siri. Should we, uh, should we mess with Aaron's phone? I'm trying to think of something to say to mess up Aaron's phone. Hey, Siri. Just got 20 seconds. Hey, Siri. Um, Hey Siri, what's the weather in Milan? Hopefully, hopefully Siri will tell Aroni the weather. Oh, it looks like it's nice out there. 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Zero chance of rain. See, I would have forgotten. Thank you, Siri. What would I do without Siri? So let me switch that back to everyone chatting. If I remember how to do that, I think I do. Subscribers, one minute, there we go. All right, back to the lesson, back to the lesson. Let's do this. We just talked about ghosts. What about this? Boo, this is what ghosts might say. Boo, ghosts say boo. If someone wants to scare another person, they might shout boo. So in English, that is a way we scare people. I don't like scaring people like that, but some people like scaring people. I don't think it's very funny, but if you are hiding behind a wall and somebody walks by, you can jump out and yell boo. It's what we say in English. I'm sure in your native language, you might have another word, not boo, but we say boo in English. How about this? Vampires. Vampires. That, that's a picture of a vampire. Vampires live forever and like drinking human blood. I saw Harry asked if I believe in ghosts. I don't. I don't think I believe in ghosts. And I definitely don't believe in vampires. But in English, there was a book called Twilight about 20 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. And it was all about vampires. So for a time, vampires and stories about vampires were very popular in the US. Do you know what else? vampires have they have fangs or two really long front teeth and so do snakes so that is a picture of fangs two front teeth that are really long i hope nobody in the chat is scared of snakes because that picture might frighten you but hey it's halloween Sometimes you are supposed to be scared or frightened on Halloween. I don't like snakes. Please let me know in the chat. Do you like snakes? A couple weeks ago, this is true. There was a snake in my classroom. There was a snake. We call it a garter snake, a garter snake. It's a... Mm, it's a little green snake. He was about that big. Green, little, garter snake. It might bite you, 
but it's not poisonous. It, the bite might hurt a little bit, but that's it. So when somebody opened the door to my classroom to leave, the snake was curled up and I started to freak out. Somebody said, there's a snake in your classroom. And I didn't yell, but I was like, oh, oh no, oh no. And one of the uh, girls in my class, she is great. She said, oh, I'll take care of it. She had no fear of snakes. She picked up the snake. My room is really close to an outside door. So she picked up the snake, put him on the grass, and everybody went to class. It was all over in about a minute, maybe a minute and a half. And she was, she was my hero that day. Most days, my hero is Bob the Canadian. But that day, it was my student. Okay, VS does not like snakes. I mean, well, let's just put the snake back up here. Just so some people will remember what a Oh, that's a bad picture. Oh, sorry. Bad picture. Hey, hats off to you, sir. I'm from Pakistan. That is so cool. I was just having a conversation with another one of my students just yesterday. And we were talking about the top three countries we want to visit. And I said, Italy. Brazil, number three, Pakistan. Yep. I would like to visit Islamabad. I would like to visit Lahore. And I would like to visit the mountains. Yep. Pakistan. I would love to do an English lesson in Pakistan one day. That is a dream of mine. Noriko, I don't like snakes, but I'm not afraid of them. Just creepy. That is a good adjective. Creepy. Just might make you shiver a little bit. I'm kind of shivering now. My body is doing little shakes. Oof. Gives you the heebie-jeebies. We might say that in English. If something is creepy, it gives you the heebie-jeebies. Absolutely not. Hate snakes. Aaron, he said. I agree. Yulia, not a snake fan. Ooh. Do you have, do you have anacondas? In Chile? Hmm. I know there are a lot of rainforests in South America. Hmm. What's this? Freddie says, in order not to be bitten from a vampire, you should have garlic. That's what I've heard. Have garlic. Hey, just because Freddie said garlics, I'm going to explain that we never, never use the plural for garlic which is weird. Garlics. We never say that. It's just garlic. One garlic, two garlics. No, we would say two cloves of garlic. It's weird, huh? I never thought of that until I saw Freddie's response. Just like hair, even though I'm losing my hair, sadly. Um, we very rarely say hairs very rarely maybe strands of hair pieces of hair but a single strand of hair hopefully that helps it's not english um halloween but will i celebrate we need to get back to the lesson don't we the, the chat has been so fun today though um i might celebrate halloween both of my children are so old that they are not going to dress up for Halloween, I don't think. And this year, Halloween is on a Monday, right at the beginning of the week. So I don't think I will celebrate Halloween. Jamie and I, my wife, Jamie and I need to talk. Will we pass out or give out candy? I don't know. I don't know yet. Freddie says he cannot stand snakes. Jeez, Mahmood. Um, do you think that Halloween is just another manipulation to make people spend their hard-earned money on junk? Um, I maybe, but uh, you know, little kids love it. Little kids love Halloween. My kids loved Halloween when they were young, so maybe 
Halloween isn't as bad as some other some other holidays like Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah. My mood. Sometimes I forget. That's why I set the timer. I didn't want to forget to turn back on everybody chat. All right. We this the chat is the chat is the chat is popping today. James Bolduck. I know that guy. How are you? Former student. Mahdi. Saudi Arabia is in the house. Oh, Manuel is late. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. All right, but you're here now. Welcome. All right. Yeah. If you want, yeah. No. That yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. That's very scary. War zones, yeah. Sad stuff. Sad stuff. Natalia, how did you know I'm going to be talking about pumpkin pie? Let's get back. Let's get back to the lesson. We just talked about fangs and everybody said that they loved snakes. So maybe I should get rid of that picture. No, I think most people said they hate snakes, right? Let me get rid of that picture. The next one, this is from Impulse Imp. He left this question earlier and he said, hey, Brent, is it difficult to carve Halloween pumpkins? So that first question, I want to introduce, hang on, hang on a second. Audie the tie dropped a super chat. Thank you so much, Audie. Audie is also a gold member. Audie is awesome. Thank you so much. Have a little something for you. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Audie the tie. Thank you. Thank you so much. I talk to Audie the tie almost every day in volley. I see a video from him. Thank you so much, Audie. So impulse imp was asking, is it difficult to carve Halloween pumpkins? My answer is yes. You need a really sharp knife to carve a pumpkin. I have never cut myself carving a pumpkin, but usually you, what I do is I take newspaper, newspaper, and I spread it out on the table because carving a pumpkin can get really messy. So I get my sharp knife and I cut around the top and I pull off the stem. Lots of English vocabulary there. I pull off the stem. I reach in and pull out all of the guts. The inside of the pumpkin, we might call guts. Now, there are some seeds. There are some seeds inside the pumpkin. So I have a little sentence for you. Jack-o'-lanterns are what some native English speakers call carved pumpkins. So if you see the little emoji that you can write that has a pumpkin, a carved pumpkin, you might hear it called jack-o'-lantern. Maybe. Some people just say, hey, do you want to carve a pumpkin? Or you might hear, hey, do you want to make a jack-o'-lantern? We say both terms. One of the hardest things about carving a pumpkin is scooping out the pumpkin seeds. I thought scooping out might be a new English phrasal verb for you. When you scoop something out, it's kind of like you take a spoon or maybe your hand like this, you reach in and pull something out. Lots of English phrasal verbs there. So you could scoop out seeds and guts from a pumpkin or my favorite thing to do, scoop out ice cream from its container. Ice cream. It's getting a little cold though for ice cream. But in the summer, I love scooping out ice cream and putting it on a cone. After carving a pumpkin, I will often dry the seeds on a paper towel, salt them, and toast them in the oven. They are delicious. 
So when my children were smaller and we were carving pumpkins, I would often take the seeds, let them dry out on a paper towel, more English phrasal verbs, dry out on a paper towel and then salt them, put some salt on them, put them in the oven and toast them. And then after eat them, they were delicious. They were delicious. Let's check. There's a new member in the house. Roger, welcome. I think Roger's been a member before, right? So if you are a silver member, check that Discord server. If you need a link, let me know. If you are a gold member, join us on Volley. If you need a link, let me know. After the chat, I will check and give you the link if you need a link. Okay, hey, hey, pumpkin pie, Constantine. It's coming up. Rogers, I got a little something for you. New member. Make sure you check the members tab for the Discord, the members chat, and the bonus videos. Yeah, so lately I've been putting a few bonus videos together for members. So check that out talked about fixing a pipe in my yard. Natalia, I need to respond to Natalia later today for a member's video. So Roger, thank you. Look forward to getting to know you. Welcome. All right. What were we talking about? Hello, everyone. Roger's in the house. All right. Hmm. Oh, really? At Christmas, you eat pumpkin with sugar. That sounds good. Anything with sugar sounds good. Um, Mahmood, I think Christmas is better than Halloween. What do you think? Yeah, Christmas is always weird for me on this channel. I know that so many people around the world don't celebrate Christmas. So... I don't know, maybe we will do a Christmas episode, maybe not, but I have more family traditions when it comes to Christmas than I do Halloween, but I think both can be fun. Pumpkin pie. Good question, Madi. I thought pumpkin is the same as squash. Ooh. This is confusing because a pumpkin is a type of squash. So squash can be a couple different vegetables. So pumpkin is a type of squash, but at least in English, we have many types of squash. There's summer squash. There's something just simply called squash. It's orange like a pumpkin, but it's doesn't taste like a pumpkin. Also, we have something called yams, which are also orange, but sometimes they're called sweet potatoes. Maybe I need to do an English lesson all about vegetables. Maybe. Let me know. Let me know. All right. Let's see. Did you ever trick or treat with Jamie? Um. Okay. So one time we went to a friend's Halloween party and we dressed up. Adults in the United States don't go trick-or-treating if they don't have children, really. At about 13 or 14, people usually stop trick-or-treating. But we did dress up. I was Darth Vader from Star Wars. I can't remember what Jamie was, but one year before we had children, we did go to an adult Halloween party where all of our friends dressed up. Yeah, that was fun. Maybe we'll go to another one sometime soon. I don't know. All right, back to the lesson. I think we still have... Oh, what time do children start going from house to house saying trick or treat? So Impulse Imp said house to house. That is the same as door to door. We will use both terms. What time? It's usually when the sun goes down. So where I live, this time of year, right around 5 o'clock, maybe 5.30 in the evening, children will start to go 
door to door or house to house trick or treating. And his final question was, do I like Halloween? Mm, I could take it or leave it. If you don't really care too much about something, you can say, eh, I could take it or leave it. I could take it or leave it. Um, Halloween, it's not my favorite holiday. It's fine. I like to get discounted candy after Halloween. So if candy doesn't sell in a store after Halloween, the store will usually bring the price down. They will discount the price. So sometimes you might be able to get discounted Halloween candy for 50% off. So I like candy. So that part of Halloween I like, but I don't like being scared. So hmm, I could take it or leave it. I could take it or leave it. All right, let's make this a little bigger because we have another question. Sergey wants to know, do you usually make a pumpkin pie? If the answer is yes, what is the best recipe? And of course, Nori said, please talk about this. And also Yulia right at the bottom. Yes, yes, plus one with a little jack-o'-lantern emoji. So of course, I felt I really need to talk about pumpkin pie, don't I? Pumpkin pie. Now, be careful. Most Americans that I know will not eat pumpkin pie for Halloween. We will eat pumpkin pie for Thanksgiving, which is usually about three weeks after Halloween. So we have Halloween, we have Thanksgiving, we have Black Friday, we have Christmas, we have New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Some Americans will celebrate Hanukkah if they're Jewish. Hanukkah is right in the holiday season. Lots of holidays from the end of October to the beginning of January. We call that holiday season. So a lot of Americans will have pumpkin pie on Thanksgiving, not so much for Halloween. So let's talk about pumpkin pie. There is a picture of pumpkin pie right there. Doesn't it look delicious? It is super orange. It has some white stuff on the top and some crust. So let's talk about some of the ways you would make pumpkin pie. Hopefully my internet connection is good because I just got an alert. Oh no, I saw that breaking up. Okay, maybe we're back. That happened last time, right? Um, let's keep rolling with the, with the lesson just in case my internet goes out. It's back now. Sorry about that. Um, but most people, in fact, I don't know how to make pumpkin pie from real pumpkin. I think most Americans will get what's called canned pumpkin. Canned pumpkin. It's pumpkin that comes in a can. No seeds, just pumpkin. And probably a lot of sugar. Something like that. Uh, phew, I'm back. Thank you. But you also will need a crust. A crust. And let's talk about what a crust is. You can see the picture and that helps. But just in case you're listening to the podcast, a pie's crust is the outer hard part of a pie. The shell of a pie. Kind of like dough. So almost like bread before it's baked. That's the crust. Again, if you can see the picture, then of course you have this in your language. Oh, I know that. That's the crust. Okay. But for podcast people, the crust is the outer hard part of the pie. It's almost like the dough, the bread. Then you bake it. And then you might top it with whipped cream. Many Americans will top two typos, two typos. 
Many Americans will top their pumpkin pie with whipped cream. And if you can't see that picture, podcast people, whipped cream is the white stuff on top of a pumpkin pie. You can also eat a little vanilla ice cream with your pumpkin pie. Vanilla ice cream or whipped cream with your pumpkin pie. Good stuff. Good stuff. Next one here, Noriko. I think she's still in the chat, but she asked a question earlier and she was wondering a couple things. She loves Halloween, by the way, and she loves the movie Coco, but she was wondering what is the origin of Halloween? How did Halloween start? Where did it come from? Okay. I have a couple banners for you here. Halloween probably started 2000 years ago by the Celtic people. Celtic people. You can see it written there. It's pronounced Celtic people. Who are the Celtic people? Well, when I think of Celtic people, I think of Ireland, that country that's not too far from England, Ireland. So apparently Halloween started around 2000 years ago in what is today Ireland, at least by the Celtic people. And at the time, it was to celebrate the food that was grown over the summer and then it was harvested. When food in the ground is pulled up, the verb we use is harvested. Things like corn can be harvested. And it was to celebrate that. But also Celtic people thought that their dead relatives could be contacted at that time of year. So apparently uh, that is where Halloween started. I was not around when Halloween started 2000 years ago, but I think a lot of people say, oh, that's an American holiday, but no, it actually started in Ireland many, many years ago to celebrate all of the food that was harvested. All right. And she also had another question. Earlier in the chat, we talked about ghosts. Those are things. Those are nouns. But then Noriko has heard of ghosting. Ghost as a verb. It might not be on topic, she says. It's okay. And she listed this example. She ghosted me after our first date. Yeah, so ghost is American slang. And that means you were talking to someone. Maybe you were texting them. Maybe you were calling them on the phone. And then out of the blue, all of a sudden, they ignore you. They never return your calls. They never return your texts. They just ignore you. Here's something you might hear in very informal English. Things were going well between us. I thought we were going somewhere until she ghosted me. So I can imagine two people starting to date, having some fun with each other, maybe starting to fall in love. I thought we were going somewhere. That doesn't mean they were going to the store. If their relationship was going somewhere, it means they were starting to get closer. They were starting to like each other even more. But then she ghosted him for some reason. Who knows? Just ignore you. Hopefully that helps. That's what ghosting means. When somebody ignores you out of the blue, all of a sudden, for no reason that you know of. All right, check the chat. Anything? Yep. I do believe in Italia. Pagan. 
Uh, and pagan just means before religion, before, did I, did I miss a super chat? I think I missed a super chat. Oh my goodness. Cecilia, Cecilia, you do not have to do this, but thank you so much, Cecilia. Cecilia is also a teacher in Argentina and one of my first subscribers on YouTube. That is so nice of you. She's a gold member. I also talk with Cecilia almost every day on volley. So very kind of you. So very kind. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you so much, Cecilia. You've been so supportive over the last couple of years. It really means a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much, Cecilia. It's amazing. Um, Cecilia has never ghosted me. She's never ignored me. Cecilia, thank you so much. Yeah, so hopefully that helps Noriko. And I know, you know, I've had this channel for two and a half years. It will be three years in January. And Cecilia has been around since the very beginning. Thank you so much. So many have been around since the very beginning. I know Amina was early. If I start listing names, I will forget. But Nori, if you watch this on replay, Madi, very early on. So thank you so much for all the support over the years. It means a lot. I know there are so many English teachers on YouTube and you've stuck with me for a long time. Thank you, Cecilia. It means a lot. All right, the next one, I'll leave that up there for a little while. So, let me just do this. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. It's amazing. All right. The next one is spooky. Spooky. This is a tough one. This is a tough one. Last night, Jamie, my wife and I were talking. And sometimes I ask her because she is another native English speaker. I ask her, hey, what does spooky mean to you? And she said, oh, spooky means scary. And I thought, I don't think so. I don't think it is quite, I don't think it's quite scary. So we don't even agree on what spooky means. She says it's the same as scary. I think it's a little bit different. Oh no, we have a new member. We have a new super chat. Hang on. I will get right to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'll be right there. But let's talk about spooky. And then I need to thank some more people. Thank you so much. Um, for me, and I looked spooky up in the dictionary. And I could have just said, oh, spooky means scary. It might, but I also think it means almost scary. Spooky is almost scary but not quite fog in the morning. Maybe you drive to work and it's really early in the morning and it's kind of foggy. You can't see out in the distance. It's a little spooky to me. It's not scary. I'm not scared. I'm just worried something might happen. It's spooky. The woods at night might be a little spooky. Maybe you don't want to go walking in the woods. It's not dangerous. If you were in a big city where a lot of crime was happening and you were walking down the street, that's not spooky. That's dangerous. Spooky to me means something bad could happen. It might scare you, but it's not quite scary yet. Hope that helps. Spooky is a hard word to describe. All right, Chris, thank you. Thank you so much. It means so much. Got a little something for you. Thank oh, you. Thank you so much for the super chat. And I know that money is not easy to come by these days. A lot of people are struggling. A couple of years ago, it seems our money went further. So thank you so much. I know it takes a lot to earn money these days. And the fact that you are helping me out, helping the channel out, it means so much. It really does. Also, I believe there was a new member. 
Rose, welcome to the club. Got a little something for you here. Let me find it. New member. Make sure you check the members tab for the Discord, the members chat, and the bonus videos. Yes, Rose, just in case you weren't here when Roger joined, after the chat, I will check. And if you are a gold member, I will put a link to the volley so you can join us there on the volley server. If you are a silver member, you will get access to the Discord server. We chat in there almost every day. And if you are a bronze member, well, your name is in green now. Welcome to the club. And you also get the bonus videos. So there are, I think, 100 bonus videos. There's a whole playlist. You can go back. All right. Thank you so much, Rose. Welcome to the club. All right. Let's check the chat here. Mm, menacing. That's a good one. Spooky and menacing are very close. Yeah, menacing, it doesn't mean it's it's dangerous. It doesn't mean you're getting hurt, but it's close. Something bad could happen. If um, If it feels a little menacing... It's not a good thing. It's close. Some of these words are are hard to uh, question. Noriko, spooky, eerie. Can we use them interchangeably? I do think spooky, eerie. Jamie would say scary. Those can all be used interchangeably, but I do think spooky and eerie are really close. Maybe if you walk into a house. Nobody has lived there for a while. There is no electricity. There are cobwebs. We will talk about cobwebs soon. That would be eerie. That would be spooky. If you heard somebody screaming upstairs in a house you thought nobody was living in, I would say that's scary. That could be dangerous. But Spooky isn't as bad, I don't think, as um, Natalia. I don't know what, I don't know that word, to be honest. I don't know that word. The one that starts with an I. So I wouldn't use that word just because I don't know what it is. And I'm a native English speaker, been speaking English for over 40 years. If I don't know it, Probably a lot of other people don't know it either. Intrigant? I can't even pronounce it. Intrigant? Probably not, Natalia. Spooky, eerie, those two work. What else? Mahmood is wondering, have I ever met Teacher Bob? No, not in person. We've spoken over Skype before, but uh, hopefully one day we will meet. Maybe in the summer. We both teach, so... We have a little extra time in the summer. Leo is here from France. Bienvenue. Bienvenue. All right. Madi's watching silently. I think one of the best ways to learn English is by listening. And so far, you have had one hour of listening about Halloween. I think that will really help your English. You can always watch on replay too. All right, Noriko, I was under the impression that it must be American culture. Learning English and learning culture from you absolutely hit differently. Love it. It's a good term. Just hits a little differently. It just feels a little different. Um, I used that term before in a video last year, maybe. It's good slang to know. If something feels a little different or it like just feels a little better, you can say, oh, just, it just hits a little differently. The example I used was Coke. Everybody knows that soda, right? Probably not good for you, but a lot of people drink it. Coke from a can, Coke from a glass bottle just hits a little differently. Coke from a bottle, I think just tastes a little better. I don't know why. It could be the exact same thing. It just feels a little better. 
So thank you, Noriko. Learning English from this channel just hits a little differently. I don't, I don't, I don't know those words. I'm sorry, Freddie. I don't know those words. So, all right, let's do this. Got a few more for you here. We talked about spooky. What about this? I don't know if anybody has ever done this, but when I was a kid, a big thing at Halloween parties was bobbing for apples. Bobbing from apples. And it's exactly what it looks like. If you are listening on the podcast, it means there is a big tub of water. Somebody will put apples in that water and you will have to put your face in the water trying to grab an apple, but you cannot use your hands. So you have to dunk your face in the water. And if you get an apple, it's yours to keep. You can eat that apple. Now, I think after 2020, the year 2020, and all of the illness that happened because of that C19, I don't think anybody bobs for apples anymore. It's not exactly the cleanest thing to do. But when I was a kid, a big thing at Halloween was to go bobbing for apples. Let me know in the chat, have you ever gone bobbing for apples? I don't know. It's probably not the cleanest thing to do anymore, bobbing for apples. How about this? In that picture is a witch. And a lot of times a witch will use a cauldron. She will have something boiling in her cauldron. A lot of kids and even adults like to dress up as witches for Halloween. And that is a picture of a witch. She has on a witch's hat. Her skin might be green. She is often very ugly looking. She will often have a wart on her nose. Witches do have a little bump on their nose. Witches, cauldron, smoky cauldron with boiling liquid. Probably not water. Maybe something more spooky. Something a little more eerie. All right, the next one here, cobwebs. Cobwebs, this is a difficult one because cobwebs, let me make the picture a little bigger. Cobwebs look like spider webs and they you can call them spider webs if you would like. Spiders weave webs to try to catch food, to try to catch other bugs that they can eat. But cobwebs are spider webs that no longer have spiders living in them. Got a sentence for you or a couple here. Spiders live in spider webs. Cobwebs are spider webs that spiders no longer live in. Cobwebs. And cobwebs can be pretty spooky. A lot of times, if a house has been abandoned, abandoned means somebody has left it and they haven't come back. So if a house is abandoned and you walk into it, you might see cobwebs in the corner of the room. And it can be a little spooky. Not even a spider is living there. How about this? Sp spider webs that spiders abandon are called cobwebs. That might be a new term, abandoned, abandoned. It means you leave something and you never come back. In the United States, you might see cars that have been abandoned on the side of the road. Maybe they broke, maybe they broke down and they have to be fixed, but the owner is not there abandoned cars. All right. There are some things going on in the chat. Let me check it. Let me check it. Oh yes. Earlier I used the word guts. 
Yes, it might mean for a human, it might mean the stomach. It might mean the inside of your body, your guts, but we can also use it for pumpkins. It's also the inside of a pumpkin. It's all stringy. There are seeds there. Let's see here. Bobbing. Is it related to Bob? Hmm. Bob the Canadian. I don't think so. Um, the verb. Thank you, Harry. The word Bob is the motion that somebody's head will do when they are bobbing for apples. Bob might mean it, it can be a verb meaning to go up and down. Think about fishing. There is something that some people use when they fish. Sometimes it's a little circle. It's red and white and it stays on top of the water. It's called a bobber. So on top of the water, if it goes up and down, we can use the verb. It's bobbing up and down um, right now. If you're watching, I'm going to bob my head. Nodding is like this. Like if I say yes, I'm nodding, but this is bobbing. Hope that helps. I feel a little silly, but sometimes you have to be silly to teach English. No way. Noriko says that she goes apple bobbing. That's another way to say it too. She goes apple bobbing. Interesting. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. All right. Um, Rizwan is wondering where are the other people? So I am on both Facebook and YouTube. So I think there are more people watching on YouTube. Looks like there are 57 people right now watching. Thank you so much for watching. All right. Lots of questions in there. I'm not sure I will get to all of them. Yeah, you need to trust your gut. Trust your gut. It just means if you feel some way, like go with it. How about this? If you see an abandoned house and you get a feeling like, ooh, maybe I shouldn't go in there. Trust your gut. Don't go in there. Maybe the woods look a little spooky and you worry, ooh, if I go in there, maybe I will meet a bear. Maybe there's a bad person in the woods that is going to hurt me. Trust your gut. Listen to your body. Your body is trying to tell you something. All right, Natalia, she has to go, but she's hoping everybody has a terrific holiday. And if you are a channel member, Natalia left a comment that I want to answer. Not, not for the whole channel, but um, for channel members, I think it might be helpful. All right. Is that it? Bob is from Robert. Yes. I watch, I watch almost all of Bob the Canadian's live streams after I have class, but I saw that question in his chat yesterday. Yeah. In English, it doesn't make any sense. Robert might be somebody's full name, but they might call him Bob. Or how about this one? This is really weird. Richard. Richard. If somebody's name is Richard in English, they might call him Dick for short. At least an older person. The name Dick isn't very popular anymore. I won't go into why, but you can look it up maybe. Do we have any more? Oh, we do have cavities. We need to talk about cavities. What are cavities, you might wonder? What is that in English? Well, when teeth turn black at the top and hurt, maybe from eating too much sugar, we call those things cavities. Yeah. Sometimes if you eat too much candy at Halloween, your teeth might develop cavities. Then you will have to go see the dentist and you will have to get those cavities filled in. I hope you don't eat too much candy for Halloween. 
I hope you don't get any cavities. Remember, brush your teeth and floss after eating lots of sugar. I want to thank everybody. Thank you so much. If you still haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button if you haven't. Other people might be able to find the replay. Thank you so much. Lots of great questions today. Lots of great super chats. Lots of new members. Rose, thank you so much. Chris, thank you so much. Cecilia, thank you so much. What's that? Roger. Where's Roger? Did I miss? Roger became a, a member. There he is. Roger, thank you so much. I think Audie. Audie, thank you so much for the super chat. If you hit the like button, if you subscribed, thank you so much. Thank you to channel members. I had a blast. Talking about Halloween was very fun for me. I hope it was fun for you to learn English. Let's say goodbye to a couple people before we are out of here. Constantine, thank you so much. Nathalie, how are you? From the Netherlands, right? It's been a while. Welcome back. Madi, Madi has been with the channel for a long time. So is Mega. Thank you so much for all of your support. Williams, my friend from Argentina, I'm sure we will talk on Discord this week. Aron. Thank you so much. Let's do it. Noriko from Japan. Thank you so much. Mahmood, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Harry, Indonesia. I looked up Indonesia earlier today. The fourth biggest country. The fourth biggest country. It's China, India, United States, Indonesia. And right now, the podcast is 68th in Indonesia. So if you're listening from Indonesia, thank you so much. If you're listening anywhere, thank you so much. Freddie Wolf, Zayad, Yulia, Kundra, welcome. Thank you. All right. With that said, I can't say your name. I'm sorry. But it is, uh, are you from Tajikistan, I think, right? So it's all right. Yelena, thank you so much. Roger, thank you for becoming a channel member. I'm going to check on the channel members and drop the links. All right. Adios, amigos. Have a great week.